You know, there's a few things in life that are guaranteed to happen. The sun will rise up the next day. Mainstream media will most likely print fake news. And the left will never criticise Islam. Not, not, not the far left. They have a uncomfortable butt relationship with Islam. They, they think it's great. They think it's terrific. They ignore cases like this, where a Australian woman was raped, starved, and kept as a prisoner. Now, look at the end of the day. Obviously, if you want to go on about women being stupid enough to fly to a different country to meet a guy that she had only met over the internet because she thinks he's the man of her dreams, that's an argument we can have. But at the end of the day, regardless, I don't think anyone, regardless of how stupid they were, should be raped, starved, and kept as a prisoner, let alone forced Islam upon her. But let's jump into the story. Oh, by the way, there's no way this is going to be monetized. But let's jump into the story. I was raped, starved, and kept as a prisoner. How Australian woman 30 travelled to Pakistan, great idea, to meet the man of her dreams, because he's not going to be a male chauvinist piss, uh, piece of shit. Hey, but, you know, Gillette, feel free to put that in your ad. Only for him to lock her, force Islam upon her, and abuse her daily. You mean sexually abuse her daily, right? You, you, you're making it sound like it was only beatings. She was raped daily by this guy. Like, even the Daily Mail is trying to downplay it. Like, holy shit. But let's jump into it. The Australian woman who was lured to Pakistan... She was... Yeah, she was lured, sure. By a false promise of a lavish life with the man of her dreams was instead locked up, beaten, and used as a sex slave for months. Uh, is anybody surprised by this? But anyway, Laura Hill, 30, which is actually, she's kind of hot. Uh, there's other photos that come up in a sec. Uh, became the victim of a predatory online groomer who raped her repeatedly over several months and kept her locked up in squalor. When she managed to contact the Australian Commission in Pakistan, uh, she claimed that she was met with a lackluster response and offered only limited advice. Describing her living nightmare to the Daily Mail, Miss Hull said she was groomed by a man called Sidi, who promised her a lavish lifestyle in a Spanish-style villa in Lyra. Might be mispronouncing that. You, you, it's kind of sounded like you only went there because it was a lavish lifestyle. Moving along, uh, her nightmare experience started from the chance meeting in 2013. Miss Hull, having completed a law degree at the University of Notre Dame and working in a prestige position, struck up a friendship on a train with a Pakistani woman called Regina in 2013. Miss Hull offered to teach her English, and over time she became honorary member of the woman's family, who told her how much they adored her and often brought her little gifts. I didn't come from a functioning family, so it was everything I was craving, Miss Hall said. Uh, what, uh, there she is there, actually. Uh, there. That's her there. She was quite pretty, actually. There, she's there. Um, one night, Miss Hall was on Skype call to Rajin's family in Pakistan, uh, Pakistan, Pakistan, and made her first contact with Siddhar, who was a, rel a relative. The pair connected on Facebook and talked intimately over the next few years. Sadiq, came, he, uh, Sadiq Shajik claimed he was also a lawyer and always prepared, sorry, and always appeared interest in her life and was eager to make her happy. I'm sure he was, you know, because they're not, you know, patriarch or anything over there. But anyway, uh, Sadiq's fanship came at a challenging time for Miss Hall who had battled obsessive compulsive disorder and still felt the leg legacy of a difficult childhood. In other words, insert excuse here. Despite her belaging uh, legal career and a strong profession prospects, her troubles mounted to the point where she suffered a breakdown. You don't really talk about them, do you? But anyway, I'm guessing it's some sort of trouble with the law or something. I'm, I'm guessing at that point, but yeah, regardless. Uh, Sadiq came into my life at just the right time when I was completely vulnerable, Miss Hall said. 
He promised a grand, amazing, happy life, and I would ever, if I would ever consider him. He said he had five houses and showed purchase contracts for a Spanish house that he said we could live in and that we could decorate however we wanted. He even sent me pictures of the house. I remember asking him if I would ever, uh, if he would ever lie to me. He said no. I was very attractive and seductive. Are you are you gonna ever lie to me? No. Of course he's gonna say that, you stupid woman. But anyway. I was seduced by the promise of this amazing life with him. She's sounding a little bit like a gold digger. I'm just saying by this stage. But anyway, my life in Sydney was so something at the time. So I thought maybe I would give it a go. He he would always say, I'll fill your bank. I'll fill all your blank spaces. Uh, maybe that's got lost in translation because to me that says something else. But anyway, um, I was one of his fav That was one of his favorite sayings, and I know his family here for a long time. So, apparently, oops, wrong mouse. Apparently, that's the house he sent her a photo of. But anyway, uh, he, pr he pr promised Miss Hall that she could decorate their new luxury home in all the way she wanted. Of course, he's trying to say that. He's trying to lure her to the house. But anyway. Sajuk was also in contact with Miss Hall's family. Over Facebook, he struck up friendship with her twin, Amy, uh, who also sent her, grandma's e uh, sent her grandmother emails promising he would keep her safe. He offered protection and comfort that the security Miss Hall had always craved. Amy was over the moon for her sister. He was very compassionate, enthusiastic, always there to listen, issuing grandiose promises like a friendship, a very trustworthy person, Amy said. In early 2018, Shajik invited Miss Hall to his brother's wedding in Pakistan, uh, yeah, Pakistan, where she saw it as the perfect chance to see if their online romance could turn into a real-life love. Intoxicated by the promise of a beautiful life, and seduced by the man of her dreams, Miss Hall took the plunge on April 23rd last year as she flew 18 hours to the law. Did you ever think to maybe check to see if there were a lot of Spanish houses in this area? Just saying. The house was certainly not like anything in the picture. I was taken back when I arrived, Miss Hall said. There were 20 people living in five bedrooms, he said. Uh, he said they were just there for the wedding. It was filthy. But uh, but he was being so nice, so I still thought it was a dream come true. Over the next few weeks, Sadiq admitted, uh, admitted that he had fabricated the Spanish villa and that he was not the man he had claimed to be. All feeling of love died. Then the abuse started, she said. So he admitted he fabricated the Spanish villa... And then all of a sudden, all the love and feelings of love died. Okay. Sure. Uh, sure there was a song written by about this, but anyway. Uh, Sadiq raped me and his brother attempted to rape me on multiple occasions. Look, regardless of how much this girl might or might not be a gold digger, obviously raping is bad. Okay, I don't need to say that, but just in case. Um, that obviously is disgusting. So, yeah. I was a kept woman. I was denied feminine hygiene products and had to bleed freely. Well, that's something that's never in the brochure. I was starved over a long period of time. No one occasion... Uh, sorry, on one occasion up to 14 hours. Well, at least you won't get fat, I suppose. But anyway. Um, Miss Holt const uh, continually refused to Dick's marriage proposal and he refused to com uh, and and her refusal to convert to Islam only enraged him further. I was made to pre present myself naked after a shower. One time I had a bit of shampoo still on my hair after showering and Sadiq grabbed me telling me that I was an idiot and slammed my head into the basin. Holy shit. I was once made a uh, made to lay naked in the bed with my legs open. One time I I was so one time I was ill, he thought it was hilarious as I was vomiting to come up and try and rape me while I was hurling. I had I had come all the way to Pakistan, uh, Pakistan to be a prisoner. 
Miss Hole's 30-day visa had expired, and Sajjar claimed that he had contact workers on a uh, sorry, and he had contacts working on a renewal, but told her in the meantime she couldn't leave the house or risk being arrested. I would have taken the arrest, to be honest, but anyway. She managed to contact the Aussie Consulate and High Commission, thinking her reports of sexual assault would be tri uh, triggered, triggered an urgent response. She was disappointed by the lacklustre at at attitude, saying that she was told to say uh, seek safety, but she was scared to go to the police due to her visa overstaying and for speaking out against a local man. The Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade Spokesman confirmed to the Daily Mail Australia that it provided consular assistance to an Australian woman last year, but would not divulge the details due to privacy obligations. Also, pending lawsuits, because they're probably going to get sued, but anyway. So Miss Hall planned her own escape. She reached out to Dr. Kessa Regini, uh, Chief Executive of the Elite AFOHS Club, a prestigious members-only club of armed force officers, diplomats, and prominent business personalities. Uh, she approached me via Facebook, and the social media channels are usually not real. So after doing some due diligence and that she was a girl in need of help, I realized the situation that she was staying at a house somewhat against her will. So somewhat against her will, dude? Really? Uh, Dr. Refugee told the Daily Mail. One night, she, uh, after Sadiq threatened to delete her, Miss Hole barricaded herself in a bedroom and woke up the courage to call the police. When they arrived on the doorstep, Shajik begged her to tell them that she was fine, but Dr. Ravaf got on the line and she was escorted to the local station. She was released into the care of Dr. Rajaf and spent two weeks at the Afio Club with Pakistan's elite military and government community. Dr. Ravjif said he often offered to help partly because he did not want Miss Hall leaving with a completely bad image of Pakistan's people. So in other words, he has a agenda as well. But anyway, at least she got out, I suppose. I find extremely generous and positive person, he said. But I was disappointed that somewhat angry that for her to come into a total strange, uh, strange country and strange people to whom she met through the internet. Yeah, not, not the smartest idea this girl has ever had. But anyway, uh... Our youth must learn that the internet is not a safe place and we must not believe fantasies which someone portrays on the internet. After two weeks, Miss Hall moved out to stay with another friend that she had made online, Rafi, who offered her safe house. Oh my freaking god, woman. Really? You, 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 you flew to Pakistan to meet an online friend who claimed to offer you safety... After being raped and abused daily, you finally leave that situation and you make friends with someone else online, another male, who offers you a safe house um, and you go to him? Holy shit. Concerned about her over uh, her sorry, concerned about how she overstayed her visa, Miss Hull and Rafi flew to Islamabad where the, the Ministry of Interior has its headquarters. At first, she was threatened with detention for overstaying her visa, but after some, um, some pleading, she was given a 400 US fine and instructed to leave within 10 days. With not enough money to feed herself, let alone purchase an international flight, Miss Hall said she tried again to reach out the Australian Embassy, I begged the embassy to ask if I could take safe harbour, and they said no. Um, I said I'm the victim of abuse, but it was just me. Uh, it was just me meet again with. But I was just met. Sorry, I was just met again with lackluster replies. With nowhere else to turn, Miss Hull set up a GoFundMe and reached out to the British Pakistani Christian Association. Wilson Charity, the head of the organisation, answered her pleas. The organisation paid her fines and organised safe passage to, out of the country and back home to Australia, where criticising the Australian government for its feasible response. The Australian Consulate and High Commission failed to provide any assistance and seemed not to take her plight seriously. Uh, this, uh, uh, this often 
place Laura in further set of difficult and dangerous circumstances, Miss Chaldi said, which I would agree with. Consulate officials seemed inca incapable of understanding her, mo uh, her mental coordination and may have even uh, uh, misinterpreted her OCD and assumed she was a prank caller. Despite her frequent explanations and pleads, uh, worse still, the, off the offered advice was wholly inadequate and caused Laura grievous despair. Miss Hall and Mr. Cherry was the man who got her home and was now working with the BPCA on cases similar to her own. I'm not a Christian, I'm an ag ag agnostic, but Wilson helped me get out of the country. He was a big part of me getting out. Or me getting out, yeah. Miss Hall was glad to have uh, emerged from her nightmare experience in Pakistan, but remained troubled by the Australian government re uh, relative inaction. Why did the Australian government let me down? I'm speaking out because no Australian should ever be left behind. Uh, quick here to sign the petition. Look, at the end of the day, obviously the Australian government's um, completely inadequate, obviously, when it comes to this sort of stuff. Um, look, is the Australian government to blame? Sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, look, there's a bit of blame that needs to go around everywhere. Obviously, her decision to fly to a different country on her own to meet a guy who promised her the world, that was completely stupid. Um, she seems like she might have done it because of me finances. You know, you know, digging for that gold. Um, but look, at the end of the day, obviously, look, apart from that, look, obviously, that she didn't deserve this regardless how much of digging she was over. Um, but like I say, yeah, look, at the end of the day, obviously, yeah... I, I, is anybody surprised? Some Muslim over in Pakistan wanted to bring a white girl over to his country, promised her the world, and when she got there, she was raped, abused, and kept as a prisoner. Oh my god, imagine my freaking shock. Fuck me drunk. Is anybody surprised by this? No, of course not. Um, look, at the end of the day, obviously... Um, I'd like to know where the feminists were, where this girl was being raped, abused, and not not by Islam. It doesn't seem to be any mention of that. Uh, where are we? You know, where's Anita Sarkeesian and and all these feminists that go on about, you know, that these these, you know, male chauvinist pigs. You know, where, where's Gillette, for example, going on about male toxicity? You know. No, not once did we... Uh, I didn't even... I think I might have... No, I didn't hear about this. No, I would have reported on it if I had. Have. Yeah, not once did I hear about this. Where, where were all the feminists? You know, what about me patriarchy? You know, what about feminism and woman power? And what were you guys doing when one of your girls was being raped and abused by Islam? I know what you were doing. Sticking your fingers in your effing ears and going la di la di la. Because you don't want to criticize Islam because you'd be racist. This is the problem with identity politics. Yeah, it's sweaty man syndrome. I can't criticize Islam because shit, I'm going to be racist. And, and I can't criticize this woman because feminism and woman power. So ignore the situation. Let this girl suffer her brutal abuse and, and rapes on a daily basis. And hopefully no one will talk about it. That, that's, that's feminism 101. But... Regardless. I, I don't know, guys. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. What is your view on this? Do you think the Australian government should have done better to help? Which I would tend to agree with. Do you think the feminists should be saying something about this? Do you think the feminists like Anita Sarkeesian will talk about this? Or do you think this is just really inconvenient to bring up? Do you think that there's some responsibility to be passed on this girl who went to this guy because he offered her a lavish lifestyle, in her own words. Wow. I, yeah. I, who would have thought? Your, your Prince Charming turns out to be a troll. 
but let me know your thoughts are in the comment section below. If this video has been helpful, please smack a like. If you're new to the channel, welcome and subscribe. This will be the last video for the day, guys. Have a great night and enjoy.